So, does narcolepsy type 2 exist? Unlikely. I'm Dr. Andy Burkowski of Relax Health, and I want to talk about this diagnosis of narcolepsy type 2. So what is narcolepsy type 2? Unfortunately, it's really a diagnostic term, and it's not derived by any type of biological process that we've discovered. It's a diagnostic term to help explain a test result and a set of circumstances for that result that we can't seem to figure out. So narcolepsy type 1, which is known as narcolepsy with cataplexy, is well-defined. There's damage to the center of the brain called the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus puts out a chemical called hypocretin, and that hypocretin is lost when these brain cells are destroyed due to an autoimmune attack on the brain. Patients develop daytime sleepiness. They develop difficulty transitioning from certain stages of sleep. And cataplexy, which is sort of a, a paralysis of muscles that occur in response to an emotion where the muscles might just give out for a split second. That's narcolepsy type 1. Unfortunately, narcolepsy type 2 does not have the biological or clinical representation that is so classic to narcolepsy type 1, with the exception of patients having excessive daytime sleepiness like narcolepsy type 1, but their test result is very similar to people with narcolepsy type 1, and that's why it was given in part the name narcolepsy without cataplexy, or now narcolepsy type 2. But it may not have anything to do with narcolepsy at all, aside from the test result. So what is that test result? Well, it's called the Multiple Sleep Latency Test, or MSLT. The MSLT is done by sleep centers after an overnight sleep study. And what it is, it's a series of four to five naps done about two hours apart. Patients go to sleep, and then they wake up. If they do fall asleep after about 15 minutes, if they fall asleep too rapidly or they go into rapid eye movement sleep, which is very abnormal during the day, they may be diagnosed with narcolepsy type 2 if they don't have any of the characteristics of narcolepsy type 1. So this diagnosis, however, and the results of the MSLT could be explained by many other circumstances that are well known that are very common. For example, shift work. Uh, if you were a nurse and you worked at a hospital three days a week and worked night shifts and we ran an MSLT on you, you might have test results that look like someone with narcolepsy. So it's sort of a logical flaw to assume that the results of the MSLT definitely make someone fall into the category of this unknown condition. We call it a diagnosis of exclusion and in fact the International Classification of Sleep Disorders has this as their fifth criteria, that all other known causes of excessive daytime sleepiness must be excluded before this diagnosis should be made because there's no known cause and no known process of this condition. But yet in my practice, I see again and again people diagnosed with narcolepsy type 2, and there's actually a much better explanation for this condition. So this is a concern. One day maybe we'll know more about whether there's a subset of this condition or whether there are things that look and cause people to be sleepy that are far outside the common causes that we know now. But for now, we should be very skeptical when someone is labeled with narcolepsy type 2, and oftentimes a better explanation should be found. For more detail, you can go to my blog post on this which is a relaxing blog number 16, in which I go into this in much greater detail. And remember, this information is for general medical purposes only, does not constitute the practice of medicine, and no diagnostic or treatment decisions should be made without discussion with your healthcare provider. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.